In this episode, how about low season? Hi there, bridal couples to be. Welcome to How to Get Married in Holland. The ultimate wedding podcast of and about the Netherlands. We, wedding ceremony experts, aka celebrants Daphne and Jasperin, share all ins and outs of getting married in our flat and fabulous country. Enjoy listening. Yes, the low season. What is the low season in the Netherlands for weddings? When is the low season? I think you can say the low season is between, well, October and April, I think, yeah. because yeah. the peak season is from May mm-hmm. uh, until uh, September, of, and including September. September. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, although I, I see probably because of the, the whole COVID uh, pandemic that, that the season has been extending uh, a little bit. So April, you can already see a start up and, and sometimes yeah. October, uh, but as such, yes. So low season in uh, from October, end of October, beginning of October to, to April. What do you do? What do you do, Daphne? Because well, you don't have weddings. No, no. No, you don't. As an officiant, you, you don't. Be, uh, you know, during peak season, I compare myself to, uh, well, like a beach club because mm-hmm. it's, it's, yeah, high energy weddings, mm-hmm. weddings, weddings, mm-hmm. uh, uh, many travels, mm-hmm. uh, uh, writing, preparing mm-hmm. the ceremony. Mm-hmm. It's a very busy season, mm-hmm. so I do take some downtime. Okay. Uh, with my family. So yes. in October, it's a, it's a holiday and I have two teens. So we'd like to get away for a little bit. And we have tradition that we have a unique stay over each uh, year. Okay. So uh, whether it's like a tree house or, um, you know, uh, a cabin in the shape uh, of an animal or whatever. We've that been sounds to the exciting. Most- yeah, most strange, the strangest of places, mm-hmm. uh, but we really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I also make it a, a tradition to clean up my office. Okay. And really have a yeah, fresh start with everyone in place, mm. uh, carefully, you know, collect the invitations and put it in a beautiful map. Mm. And, uh, but I also prepare for the weddings ahead mm. because that's, takes time as well of course so, so I, what are we talking about well discovery meetings with okay. new couples yes who uh, who are informing if i'm available on their mm-hmm. desired wedding date and we have a conversation of course to get to know each other to see if we have a fight together yeah um yeah so that's also yeah great to do to get mm-hmm. to know new people mm-hmm. and learn all about their wedding wishes mm-hmm. and uh, and their plans mm-hmm. for the year ahead mm-hmm. most of the time is like a year before yes their wedding ceremony mm-hmm. uh, but also you know the preparation with my couples so the whole process of sending them their questionnaires which right. I make sure to make a very personal version of it. Okay. Uh, and to talk about, uh, yeah, how we're going to design their wedding ceremony. Right. So for, there are almost 70 choices you can make for the ceremony itself. Whoa. So there are a lot of things to consider and to decide. Yeah. So, oh, this is really us or mm-hmm. this, mm, no, not so much. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, I, I schedule a brainstorm with my couples. Okay. So we go through all the possibilities and I feed them with inspiration and mm. ideas and mm. possibilities. Mm. And they decide, yes, we're going to do it like this or no, rather like that. Right. And um, yeah, that also gives them almost like an image in mind, yeah. a script, if you will, yeah. Yeah. to see, oh, that's the sequence of the ceremony itself. Right. yes. And mm-hmm. it's also very great to, you know, have that kind of contact together in between because yeah. during, between the discovery meeting, the initial meeting mm-hmm. and the wedding day itself, yeah, 
It's a long time. It's a year. It's a long time. It's a long time. I try to do that as well. Yeah. Stay in touch with them. Make a WhatsApp group. uh, Ask them some questions in the meantime. Um, What I also do in in the downtime, as 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 you you mention it, is uh, and that's especially important for international couples or Mm -hmm. mixed nationality couples. Um, is trying to make sure that they have the right papers. Um, do they have to go to The Hague when they come from abroad, when one of them is Dutch? Yep. Have they got that one sorted? Because, you know, sometimes they say, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to get married here and there in the Netherlands, uh, but we live in Germany and um, the guy is Dutch and, and she's German, for example, um, and that they don't know where to start. So I just sort of pushed them in the in the in the right direction. I advised them, um, but also what couples sometimes forget is that if they want to get married at a specific location, which is not the town hall, then I have to be appointed for one day. Yes, and so I always point, you know, tell them said, listen, um, you want me as your wedding officiant, which is great. Um, but have you already applied at the municipality for my appointment for one day? Yeah. And sometimes they forget. Yeah. Ooh, and sometimes even the wedding couple forgets to apply uh, uh, to oh, reserve the, the wedding date at oh, the municipality. Right. Oh, no way. Because, yeah, that's a misunderstanding. You know, mm. when you book your own wedding officiant, yes. you book he or she, yeah. him or her, yeah. um, for you know, the, the, the wedding ceremony itself. Yes. But the legal part is arranged yeah. by the municipality. So yeah. you have to do that as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I, I always make a checklist um, of, you know, whether my couples have a civil wedding or a ceremonial wedding. Yeah. And uh, did we hand in the papers? If so, yes, when we, did we do it? Just to make sure that I don't forget anything, that I don't overlook anything. And I check it, you know, I just tick it off my, my checklist. Yeah. And another thing very important for international uh, couples mm-hmm. with guests coming from abroad is the visa. Because I had uh, uh, oh, right. witnesses oh. for an official uh, mm-hmm. wedding uh, who were registered as the witnesses also on the wedding certificate. Right. Uh, but their visa wasn't ready. Oh, so dear. they weren't allowed to travel. Right. Yes. Which... Uh, yeah, it was really a problem two mm. days before the wedding. Mm. So do check how many time, uh, yeah, how much time you need yes. for applying for the visa, and yeah. to make sure <clears throat> everyone is is able to, yeah, to join you at your your yeah. wedding day. It's it's fun how we how we have to, you know, share these kinds of things with um, with our couples um, that. They don't oversee the whole, the great picture and, and, and that we, you know, that we have to help them with that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we can be seen that your wedding officiant can be seen as a guide, really. Yes. And yes. of course, if you uh, have hired a wedding planner, hmm. he or she is also a great guide. Oh, yeah. And together we're like a, yeah. A team. A team. Hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's th- that's what we do in the low season, making yeah. appointments, having brainstorm sessions, planning ahead, interviewing uh, the couple, of course, the couple. Yeah, because, yeah. How much uh, time do you take? Do you take for that? Well, the the whole interview session, uh, and most of the time I combine it with the brainstorm session. So we design right. the wedding ceremony, and yeah. we take a deep dive into their questions, with yeah. which they have sent me already. Uh, because I've sent them the questionnaire. Mm-hmm. So I read through the questionnaire, um, which is a personal session for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And I highlight everything that speaks to me. Oh, I want to know a little bit more about mm-hmm. this. And what about mm-hmm. that? And, and That's I- not, I'm just going to interrupt you. My cable has come out. I'm just going to put my cable in my computer again because otherwise then my computer is going to um, switch off that's reality folks that's reality yes yeah. hold on yeah. it is somewhere here hey you also mm-hmm. have to take care of your uh, you know all your your toolbox as an efficient yeah yeah oh dear i can't find it i'm just like all my 
<laughs> I can't find a connection. I've got all these. I, oh, there I, you go. Here at first, I, I brought my laptop to the brainstorm sessions with my couples, but I've switched to my iPad. Because? Because I think there's less of a wall between us. Okay. Because you it's, know, where you're it's sitting smaller. with a laptop in between. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's why I love to read their uh, their answers and, mm. and, you know, yeah, again, sees what speaks to me mm. and then, uh, well, get in touch with them. And I come and visit them at their home, if possible, of course, mm. you mm. know, when I live in Japan or mm. the States or, mm. yeah, it's a, bit, a little bit more difficult. Mm. But then we mm. meet online and that mm. works great as well. That works perfectly well. Yeah, how about that's you? Yeah, I do the same. Um, it, the difference is that people do come to my house or sometimes when I am, am in the area, then I will plan it in this way that I will do my personal you know, visit and, and uh, my work visit to a couple at the same day. Um, but p- couples also do come to my house. And of course, when they live far away, I do an online session, which is great. Or when people are, you know, when I don't have a lot of time. It, it, it works uh, very well. Yeah. yeah. Same same thing. So um, planning ahead for me is, is very important because the wedding season, the peak season, we're going to talk about the peak season in, in the next episode. We um, will. But in the, low ep- in, in the low season, I really try to plan ahead so that in peak season, I can peak as well. Yeah. And I can focus on what matters, which is the wedding ceremony. Yeah, that I don't have to start writing anymore. That I have it all ready, and you know, for me, that gives me the best quality of ceremony that I can deliver. Yeah, yeah. So low season is um, for relaxing, planning, and preparation. And preparation. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk more about peak season in the next episode. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to How to Get Married in Holland. We look forward to share more about organizing your wedding day in the Netherlands in the next episode. Hit the subscribe button so you won't miss anything. Any questions in the meantime? Please ask wedding salamans Daphne or Jasperin. You can find us, plus the show notes, on Instagram. And if you love this podcast, please leave a review. It gives us a higher ranking, so more fun international couples with Dutch wedding plans will be able to find us. Until Until next time. time!